right, so what is growing on? It is towards the end of July and I'm finally getting back out here to do another nursery update. It's definitely been four or five weeks. Yesterday was shipping day and we've got everything dialed in now. All of our plants are pretty much going out on Monday, Tuesday if you're a little bit more local and that's to get everything to the West Coast by Friday. Typically if I ship on a Tuesday, it would actually take to the following Wednesday to make it out to California. So it's really cut down a lot of that travel time. New shipping rates are up. We have live shipping on the uh, store, kind of similar to Amazon. In the process of building a new website, working on transferring over to Shopify. So lots of exciting stuff happened with the online store. What's the most exciting is obviously these plants. So tired of seeing me, let's look at some plants. Lots of different sweet almond. We have the dwarf sweet almond, which is a selected variety that definitely stays more in the seven to eight foot range to where that standard, you know, it's closer to the 15 foot range. Um, world's best mulberry. That's a really good large variety of mulberry. Um, that was selected by, I think, another YouTuber, actually. Um, Everglades Tomato, that's the one that actually does well here. It's kind of heirloom to the state of Florida. And lots of uh, more ever-bearing mulberries. Um, Turk's Cap Hibiscus, you know, edible flower, pretty plant in the landscape. These were all just pruned. Um, the girls do a really good job of staying on top of these and keeping them at a size where they fit in the box. And we don't have to decapitate them when we're putting them in that box. Um, you know, lots of uh, Mexican sunflower, Tithonia, Tithonia diversifolia. This is the comfrey of the south. This is our biomass. This is our nutrition. This is our chop and drop. So always have lots of that in stock from four inch to one gallon. Um, this is our Sand Hill Select, a local selection of elderberry from right around the corner. And everybody always asks, you know, when do these start flowering? When do these start fruiting? And actually at a very, very young age. Um, you could see some of these actually already have berries on them right now. Um, you know, same thing with the mulberries. I saw one over there actually flowering in the pot. So these can happen really young. Still got some of those variegated nopales. That's a really pretty one. I really, I just actually recently had a Spanish dish with this chopped up with eggs and some salsa. It was phenomenal. Um, really nice pad. I actually like eating those. They are spineless, so nothing to worry about there. Here's the pink's Turk's cap. Um, you know, the, I think the red's actually a little bit sweeter, but the pink has some diversity. I had a white. I think I actually lost it. Um, cranberry hibiscus. Lots of the radiatus throughout here. Um, lemon catli guava. Strawberry catli guava. One of our most sought after Thai dwarf mulberries. This one is a super heavy producer. Like literally produces so heavy, it'll break the branches with the weight of the fruit. And when you think of a mulberry, that's a pretty small fruit. It's kind of mind blowing. Um, I picked up the camera to actually pan this way and just show you guys talking about catli guavas. Um, this is the strawberry variety. That one's actually the lemon variety. Those aren't ripe yet, but these are. And these are what the fruits look like. Let's see, I saw a really nice sized one. Oh, there's a pretty decent one right there. Whoa, so catli guava. I really look at this one as a, uh, a dooryard tree. This can go in the front yard as a place to ligustrum, you know, that typical umbrella shaped tree that you see in everybody's front yard. Woo! So catli guava. This is the strawberry. Absolutely delicious and I think the lemon's actually better. Um, they're both ready to be pruned. I'm just waiting until after they get done fruiting and I'll cut them back pretty severely. Ooh, banana doing good. All right, let's get back over here in the nursery. There's our standard sweet almond. Lots of our native mimosa, mimosa strigolosa. Lots of lemongrass. Um, this is a special variety of sugarcane. Fakahatchee grass. Chico perennial peanut. That's a special new variety that's been selected as a better lawn alternative. It's a little bit tighter, as you can see. Um, cut, but kind of hard to tell apart. It's very similar to the eco turf. Um, I definitely like it better than the flora grays. Vetiver, the stuff's almost as tall as I am, or if not taller now, it is on the table, but when it's in the ground, it will get this tall. So, you know, six, seven feet out of the ground, 15 feet into the ground. That's what this plant is so popular for, its roots for stabilization. Um, obviously also cutting it back and laying it as a grass for that carbon silica. So, guys, I tried to get out here yesterday came out at like noon and I would have died. The plants looked pissed off. It was hot. Um, you know, it's not even 8 a.m. and it is muggy. Florida is, is definitely humid right now. So um, the plants are doing fine. Uh, lots of native muley grass. This makes a beautiful purple flower in the fall. Definitely a favorite for us for the landscape. It's a pretty one. This is that special variety of Simpson Stopper. It's much prettier, a little bit more ornamental. Um, this one's called Showstopper. So it's uh, not very common. 
I think this is the last standard firebush I have. I'm almost running out of those. Lots of native coral honeysuckle. Um, this one makes really nice long flowers. It's another great one for attracting um, hummingbirds because it has that long tassel-like flower. Come on, Sony, pick me up. There we go. All right, this is that edible fruit in Tibuccina. These are some obviously just bigger one gallon mulberry or um, elderberry. Um, some chives. I've got society garlic. I've got white society garlic. I've got purple society garlic. Whoa. So nursery is really pumping. Uh, about 80, 85% of what's over here is all for our online store and then some overstock from the other side of the farm. Um, variegated society garlic, not as common. Let's check her out. Has a little bit of more of a silver with kind of a line inside of it. Definitely a really pretty one for the landscape. I'm seeing some stevia over here. Um, lots of yarrow, lots of strawberry trees, the montingia. You know, I always get the question, Pete, how long does it take for these things to start fruiting? How long does it take for these things to start flowering? They are flowering and holding fruits in a four inch pot. These trees grow really fast. They never stop fruiting. They're like a weed. Pruning is key. They are very tropical, but I think they can be grown in a more northern climate or even here as an annual. I mean, I'll get 200 fruits before they die back in the winter. Not a big deal. Um, you know, when you look at the price of the tree and how many fruits and how much it gives back to you, um, or it could be brought inside and kept in a pot and brought back out. So um, still have some uh, grafted one gallon carambola left. Uh, a lot of those actually have flowers in that one gallon size. Here's that yarrow. Got a little bit of that rue. That one's very medicinal also. I believe it's commonly used for teas. Some more different varieties of elderberry. That one looks like it's the white. That one looks like it's the giant. Um, I see Hunter in here, and I know I got lots of Sixth Street mulberries coming up, and that's the one that's really commonly used as a uh, more nematode-resistant rootstock. Uh, lots of different varieties of that Togan spinach or edible leaf um, hibiscus is what I like to call it, you know, and these are just epic grab-and-grow, like summertime. Um, you can even use this as a wrap. This leaf will get to be like four times the size eat them raw, put them on the salad. And I can come through here and eat any of this stuff because I know there's no chemicals, there's no insecticides, there's no fungicides, there's hardly any weeds. Um, we do everything in, you know, beyond natural, uh, beyond organic practices, should I say. Um, lots of longevity spinach, lots of Okinawan spinach. That's a whole table of longevity. Um, good half table of the Okinawa. And the Okinawa just has a really pretty underside to the leaf. Uh, looks like we have some mango ginger here, um, some regular ginger over here. Got some japotacabas, you know, we've got some more of those, some mints down there, and that's kind of the last of the online section here. Let's just kind of slide in over here. You know, the girls have been trying to get some figs started. We've got lots of pineapples. I mean, these are special varieties too. This isn't just like a pineapple you would grow in the grocery store. This is a Florida special. Um, looks like we've got some of that, uh, what is that? Pink Perfection Ginger, cool. Um, EG, uh, Elite Gold. I know I have a lot of White Jade, which actually has an edible core to it. These are just some one gallon Sabra Japotacabos. Looks like this is the, uh, maybe the Ethiopian Cardamom. I can't believe they've got these in, uh, whoa. Okay, um, the Low Lot. This is a great ground cover for the shade. Um, it is edible, needs to be cooked, also known as Thai pepper leaf. Looks like there's a rogue cranberry hibiscus inside of there. And these are all miracle fruit. Just had a friend over yesterday, I actually pulled a small fruit off of one of these little ones. So they can start fruiting at a really young age too. And miracle fruits can literally make a lemon taste like an orange, changes the flavor receptors in your mouth for up to 20 to 30 minutes. So pretty unique, pretty unreal. Have a flavor tripping party with that one. Um, see what we got going on over here. These are just some grafted jabos. Lots of different spiraling gingers. This is the Ethiopian cardamom. Uh, gall and gall, lesser gall and gall. Check this out, guys. I mean, we've got lesser gall and gall um, in little four inch pots finally. So that's kind of a new one. Got the uh, variegated spiral ginger over here. And then we've got orange turmeric and white turmeric and green turmeric and blue turmeric. And a lot of those were even starting to 
you know, starting to propagate and get out into four inch uh, pots. They even have a lot of shampoo ginger. This is a one gallon shampoo ginger. I mean, look at this guy putting a cone on, um, you know, in a one gallon pot. So pretty cool for the shampoo. Um, got a lot of that taro. This is that Puerto Rican variety that makes a really nice potato. Josh has had a lot of luck with We've been propagating that out. It's done really well for us. Um, some monsteras and six inch and four inch. Um, some coffee, lots of sisu spinach, great summertime green to have in the garden, thrives on neglect, takes sun, takes shade. And these are just more of those edible leaf hibiscus kind of rolling its way into some newer chaya. Um, chaya is definitely a popular one. We ship a lot of those. We've got a lot of different varieties. And I just made a, uh, a TikTok video a couple weeks ago just over there on the other side of the, the nursery, that big, big tree. Um, you know, just talking about how tough perennials are and in particular how tough chaya is. And I cut that thing back because the golf cart was starting to hit it like a month ago. There's tons of cuttings sitting underneath there that actually have green on them still. So I could probably pick that up and still stick it in the ground It would grow, and it would grow. So, I mean, just talk about a tough, tough plant. Um, these are some other varieties of chaya. Jewels of Opar. This is another one I really like. Um, and I could literally come out here and have breakfast and just eat leaves all day but I know you guys don't want to see me just eat leaves and I'm trying to limit the time here we spend so this one has a really nice crunch and texture to it not quite as mucinologist as maybe the um the togan spinach or the edible leaf hibiscus uh lots of uh these are different varieties again of the edible leaf hibiscus um pacopa really medicinal great for brain function and spinning around back over here I've got lots of new bananas that we just brought back in stock. Looks like I got some uh, some big propagation trees over here too. And I think we just got dwarf Orinoco and double Mahoy and the, what do we got? What do we got? Coco Po. A um, couple new varieties, you know, back in stock with the bananas. They're really hard to keep around. Lots of that toilet paper plant. I mean, this is the one that Rob Greenfield was pretty much famous for. Um, using as toilet paper, you know, this is like a nature's wet wipe and gets a lot bigger once it's been planted in the ground More sisu spinach. This is that selected variety by my friend Tanya in Safety Harbor and this has much more of a long leaf It's kind of just a genetic mutation and we've started propagating it and you can see how much longer the leaf is compared to your typical sisu spinach and you guys, you can see some holes in these. I mean, we're gonna get some, you know, pest and bug issues from time to time. We're gonna get some spots on the leaves. But I would say for the most part, you know, the health of these plants is, is phenomenal. Um, you know, there's a big difference once you get these plants in the ground and you actually start to build some soil health, how well these things do. But for just having them in the nursery, having them on a sterile mix, maybe doing some compost teas and some neem applications, we're able to keep everything in check out here. This is another good one. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I am going to eat you. Whoa. All right. Yeah, you heard that right. Um, Rose of Sharon. So a lot of people don't know all hibiscuses have edible flowers and certain ones are absolutely phenomenal. So my favorite is obviously the Turk's cap. I talk about that a lot. Um, the red's probably my favorite favorite, but this one is super sweet. Actually, when I first moved in the house, I had a friend come over and he's like, have you tried that one yet? I'm like, no, I had it growing here. It was here before I moved in. And this one is really sweet, like the Turk's cap also. Whole flower is edible, and it's the really nice one to have in the landscape. Obviously attracting beneficial and predatory insects also. Um, lots of our native tick seed, makes a beautiful little yellow flower. And some of that parlor maple. I need to get that video, I heard you, I'm listening. We're gonna do a uh, nature's Kool-Aid um, butterfly pea video here really soon. Been using this a lot recently on trellises. Got lots of different mints over here. Uh, Katuk can barely keep the variegated variety in stock. It seems to be super popular right now, but Katuk is just an awesome one for shade, sun, super high in protein, animal forage, tastes great raw. I mean, it's just an, a great all around plant. Um, see some bee balm in here. What do we got in the back? We got some Molokia. Um, that's probably one of my favorite uh, perennials here in the in the summertime, um, you know, it has a really nice flavor to the leaf. They actually use this plant to make jute, the rope. Um, let me get this uh, just to here for you. But so this is the Molokia or also known as the Egyptian spinach. And I think this has a really nice flavor to the leaf. 
I have noticed when we get towards the end of summer, it gets a little woodier, a little hardier, still quite good. And I've had these pods actually pickled like ochre and they're phenomenal. One of the coolest things about this one is, you know, you get this plant one time, you collect the seed. The seeds are like this beautiful green seed. There's like one pod has like 100 seeds. So you could literally share this plant with your entire block, um, you know, after you've collected it. And it's great to eat. So multifunction, that's what we look for in plants. I'm also seeing some uh, some Namwa bananas. I believe those are getting a little bit too big for shipping. Um, I did see some, uh, whoa, where do I see more bananas, more bananas. There's those star fruits I was talking about earlier. I did forget to mention the African potato mint. This makes an absolutely stunner ground cover in the landscape. Actually makes like little Irish-like potatoes underneath the ground. Probably one of the most beautiful ground covers I've ever seen. Um, just look how pretty that plant is. It takes full sun, doesn't need any irrigation. And I've noticed this one, if you leave it in the ground over a year, give it good compost, make sure it's getting some water to that root zone. The second year you're gonna get a really good harvest, you know, so leave it in the ground, let it overwinter. Um, the leaves will die back in the winter time. It kind of goes to sleep. It'll wake back up just like a, you know, like a ginger would, it goes dormant, so. African potato mint, that's a must grow. Got a lot of different peppers right now. Um, not something that we typically do, but we have a bunch in stock. Got that Lago spinach. Um, you know, the girls have been doing an awesome job propagating, like shout out to my team. Um, I can't keep up with them. They're doing an awesome work job around here and I barely ever have to keep them in check or tell them what to do. Um, moringas have been flying out the door like hotcakes. Got lots of moringa in one gallon and four inch. This is like having a health food store in your backyard. If you're not growing moringa, you're slacking. Um, papayas, so lots of different papayas here. Papayas for days, as you can see. A um, couple different of those specialty varieties of cassavas. So if you plant those this late in the year, you might not get a full root production, but you can hold on to that stock, replant it, you know, again in spring and get your harvest next year. Looks like there's some uh, Vitex in here we've been starting to propagate. Lots of Suriname cherries, lots of, uh, not lots, I see a tray of natal plum. Still got some choquettes and some other, I believe, Hall varieties of avocado in a one gallon. Um, I see Caliandra over there. I see some different salvias in here. Got that native penta. This one does really awesome. You know, this is a penta that hasn't been bred away from its pollination properties. It's really, really good for attracting beneficial and predatory insects. Unlike most of your, uh, you know, annual pentas today that are just garbage. You know, they die in a year. They need to be replaced. I, you know, the guy I got this from had been growing this since the 80s. He, unfortunately, you know, he's a good friend and had passed away. Um, he was also a rose breeder. I talk about him in a lot of videos, John Starnes, but I got this plant from him and, you know, we've been propagating it and growing it for years. It does great. Um, there's that Florida cranberry or roselle. This is the one that makes the red calyx so that if you go to Publix and you buy the zinger tea, that's what this would be made of. Super high in vitamin C. Um, awesome plant. You can eat the leaves on it also. It's not quite perennial here. It's more of an annual, but I believe down like zone in, you know, down in zone 10A or something, it might be more of a, um, a perennial crop where it wouldn't need to be replanted. Mexican sunflower needs to be cut back. It's just gotten quite huge and lots of perennial peanut. I probably keep, you know, oof, three varieties at least all the time in stock on the perennial peanut. Try to have some always available. Looks like we got some summertime lettuces over here. Uh, I got a special pack of lettuce from Echo. It was a heat tolerant um, variety. I wanted to see how it did and here you go. I can't believe it's done so well. Um, I see some peanut butter, um, peanut butter fruits in there. Uh, lots of gondules, you know, different varieties of pigeon pea. Um, got all different types in here. Here's that more of that Molokia. And gondules, you know, you, nitrogen fixer, flowers, great one for bringing in the beneficials, but you also get a bean from it. Uh, blue porterweed, you know, that's a great one you can eat the flowers on. They literally taste like raw mushrooms. Um, can be made into a tea, very medicinal. And I'm also seeing some Malabar spinach. This one definitely wants to be trellised. Um, over there on the other side of the nursery, we've got them in three gallons and we're keeping them on a piece of bamboo. But that's kind of the quick run through. I know I skipped a few things. I mean, I'm already at 20 minutes here, guys. All right, so I know I've been getting a ton of requests to break down the individual plants. You know, we have about 200 items over here, um, you know, in the online store nursery. Not always available online, but it would take me 
months, if not, you know, all year to go through all these plants one at a time. I have gone through a lot of these plants in individual videos, you know, back in the day when we just first started YouTube. So I try to do some more of those on maybe some specific ones you guys want to get in depth on, but I try to just kind of run through them here quickly. So you guys want to peek in the Jabo house real quick? Let's see what's growing on in there. So beautiful morning here on the farm. Greenhouse is coming along. Been doing some other nursery expansions, expanding the shade nursery. I just had some uh, some type of animal in here. Got some fruit off of one of my Japotacabas, which is unfortunate. I'm guessing it was a possum. Um, you know, also could have been a raccoon. But we're doing trying to do a better job of staying on top of these fruits. I mean, you know, what a problem to have. We have so much fruit, we can't eat it all. Um, we share some with the uh, the, the local animals. Ooh, it's pretty full up in here. So I see Japotacabas all over the house. Actually, he's had a friend in town. He's never had one of these and it about blew his mind. Ooh. Okay. Don't mind if I do. Mmm. Red Japotacaba. Probably one of my favorites. So before I forget, you guys asked. It's been out for weeks. Japotacaba starter packs are on the website. I believe it has like a scarlet, a red, and a gremel. There might be one with a sabra in there too. I probably should have checked before I made the video, but they're up. Get up there and check them out. Look at them. Um, you know, I tried to put a little kit together to get you guys started. So, and you know, talk to my uh, my good friend. I need to get rid of the seed. Good friend John Travis, Chapotacaba collector, about my starter pack, and he's like, "Wow, that's not really." quite the starter pack you know that's almost like an experienced grower pack just because some of the varieties are a little bit on the rarer side um you know you don't see a lot of scarlets so it's not just you know the the run-of-the-mill plain plain ones we do have some different varieties in there i know i just got some bigger grimmels up on the online store look at all these fruits and i got some yellows up on there i know we got some white varieties up on there but i don't think the white's in the um the starter pack so Whoa, so Jabo land is going off. These guys, I don't think, have stopped fruiting all summer long. Um, there's always been one in here putting fruit on. These are um, Cambuca, Polina edulis. Really excited. Most of the other ones have already come up. Those are a little bit slow. Got some over there on the uh, in the shade nursery, the ones that have already been up. What is growing on in here? Oh, these are all rare Anonas that I brought in from uh, Argentina. Some rare uh, mountain varieties that I'm hoping are going to be a little bit more cold hardy. Not available yet. I should stop showing you. Uh, lots of Patanga tubas here. I see some different Petrantha varieties. And then, you know, another Chipotacaba. Just doing its thing. All right, guys, I got to get to work. I just wanted to give you a quick run through here, quick run through the nursery. I've had a bunch of comments what's going on in the nursery. When are you going to make an update video? I wanted to get in here and just kind of show you guys what was growing, what was happening. Oh, some butterflies in here. And, you know, that's something I see in the nursery every day that you probably don't see in the standard sprayed chemical nursery is bees and butterflies and beneficials and um, you know wasps, you know, it's very diverse in the nursery whenever I look out there There's things flying especially as it warms up a little bit in the morning. So what is growing on in here? There's a big yellow um, Got a yellow fruit by the front of my house, too. So Guys want to get a sneak peek of an epic fig that I got from a buddy that I probably shouldn't even show you because it's definitely not for sale or available yet, but I hope to propagate out Whoa! Are you kidding me? Striped fig? Oh, I'll take it. And you can see they haven't weeded this area in a few weeks. Oh, um, even with the cocoa fiber in here, you still get some weeds around the outside of the pot. So we do everything we can, you know, try to combat those weeds and make our, you know, make our lives a little easier. I've been putting the coconut rings on all the pots and it definitely helps, but you know, we still spend somewhere in the 15 to 20 hour a week range you know two or three girls just weeding and keeping this place in check so it's really cheap it's really easy to maintain weeds with herbicide it takes a lot of labor takes a lot of work takes a lot of time naturally so 
you know, it's, we're not always doing stuff the easy way around here, that's for sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed, the, enjoyed this video. I thank you for all of the support with the online store. We've had plants flying out of here almost on a, like I said, two to three a week, two, two to three day a week basis. So I appreciate the support. Same thing with the ant stations. I mean, I can't even get some stuff right now. A little harder getting that stuff in stock. Prices have gone up, um, you know, shortage of plastic and multiple issues. I mean, we're having issues across the board. I can't find rock to finish jobs pipes you know having a hard time coming in edging's not available so still dealing with a little bit of that corona weirdness with the supply chain but pretty stocked on plants so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to hit that like button if you haven't subscribed yet if you do so make sure you pound that bell so you stay notified every time i upload a video because youtube does not like to tell you that stuff and most importantly get out there and pound some dirt mm -hmm.